the first time a popular meme depicted a centuries-old being with such credibility, neither as a dispassionate, unengaged, passive elder, nor as an incarnation of a lowly human passion or resentment. It seems like Kanehito Yamada really took her time to imagine what kind of wisdom centuries of experience can bring to a person still taking part in the world and its matters. That's probably why Freedom, Beyond Journey's End, is so successful and is quickly winning fans all over the world. I don't normally watch medieval fantasy anime. It feels a little too westernized and shallow, but Freedom goes way beyond a mere hack and slash and it starts where a regular show would end after the fight with the final boss. Then the whole premise of the show is a journey to rediscover what she missed in her adventures with her team by being not attentive enough in the here and now by an elf mage called Freedom. She doesn't need to prove anything or go on an arc of becoming stronger. She can focus on finding meaning in the simplest acts of everyday life and relationships. And the biggest strength of the show, bordering on a miracle, is to make such a boring concept actually really attractive. Somehow it makes you care about Furen's relationships with characters that pass away in the first couple of episodes. And what's more, none of them was flashy, loud, or especially complicated. Quite the contrary. And it's the same with Freeran's character. Despite being extremely powerful and humanity's hero after all, she's tame and gentle, preserving a certain innocence and openness towards the world. Her favorite spell is the simplest and superficially useless one, creating a small carpet of flowers. She spends her life concealing her powers actually learning to do it in a more and more masterful way, so that she remains unnoticed and even disregarded by others. Hiding as one mana is commonly regarded as a waste of time and mastering it, well, a waste of life. Suddenly, midway through the first season, I realized that Freeran represents a monastic ideal of the Catholic Church. With her purity, putting her passions, cravings and pride under control and finally leading a hidden spiritual life, invisible to others. She reminds me of Saint Therese of Lisieux, also known as the Little Flower of Jesus, who, just as Freeran, wanted to go unnoticed by the world and be as tiny as possible, cultivating only her inner life, the intimate relationship with Jesus Christ, or the hero Himmel, in Freeran's case. Such attitude is common among Christian saints, like St. Francis of Assisi or St. Faustina Kowalska, and even whole orders, like the Carthusians. For the outside world, the lives of these people are incomprehensible, enigmatic, appear completely wasted, while in the end, they end up transforming the whole reality we live in. Freeran teaches this way of being to her apprentice, Fern together with using just the most basic and non-flashy offensive spells, while all the other human mages of their age try to invent their own new and impressive spells to cut edge in the race to power, yet they remain no match to the most basic Asian craft. The parallels to our modern world are striking. What's even more telling is the reason Furan has been the most successful demon slayer in history. We get an explanation that the world of demons is extremely hierarchical, with the spell power being the key factor for establishing one's place on the ladder. Because of that, demons in Furen's world always try to manifest their mana to make sure they get the respect they deserve, because, well, obviously, climbing as high up the ladder as you can is the sole meaning of life. This way, they cannot even comprehend why would anyone want to exercise humility to lower themselves? It's beyond their understanding and it turns out to be their fatal flaw, through which they meet their doom by the hands of Freeran and Fern. Coincidentally, it is exactly the same way how you can fight demons in the real world. And this is why Freeran, beyond journey's end, is a certified Christian show.